Hey, Sophie and Lois about the industry, and we are going to take a look at formulas with polygons. So what we're going to do is introduce two new formulas that are related to shapes. So let's shape up and start shaping things. So here are, is a list of all the different names of the shapes that we need to know. They are categorized by the number of sides they have, and they also have the name. For example, one and two sided shapes are not polygons. Anything that's three or more can be considered a polygon. Like triangles is a three sided shape. The reason why we have triangles as colored right here in the pink outline is because it's going to be very, very important when you understand geometry and in the most commonly used shapes when you learn your high school geometry. So we have quadrilaterals for five pentagon, six hexagon, seven, there are two names, a heptagon or a septagon. Usually textbooks or more formal ideas of this would probably be more like a septagon, but any two answers are accepted. Octagon, like stop signs, wait, we're not there yet, let's not stop. A nonagon, that's nine sides. Then we have a decagon, that is ten sides. Then we have a dodecagon, because deca in Latin is like used for like the language for like a baseline. 10 is usually the base before it hits another number. Therefore, we have dodecagon, that is 1 and 2, that is 12 sides, and a 15 is a pentadecagon. So penta is just like a pentagon, and deca because of 10, 1 and 5. And n is just the number of sides there are in the shape because this is going to be used in formulas. That is like an n-gon. And geometry, weird, makes it easier and easier, because that so-called n-gon becomes, becomes like a 14-gon, a 21-gon, a 19-gon, a 100-gon. So from 1 to 15, excluding 11, 13, 14, 1, and 2, actually have names. Anything else is literally called itself an N-gon. So now we know the names that we need to know for geometry when we focus on the formulas with polygons. So when we talk about this part, we talk about sides. But did you know that there's a relatively proportional idea when it comes to the name of the, tr the shape? the sides, how many sides there are, but also the number of angles that are inside them. So what's supposed to be happening here is understand how, what the angles of a figure is, and also we have to understand what do they all add up to, or what is the sum of all interior angles, what is the sum of all inside angles. So there's actually a reason why in the first place we circled the word triangle or the name triangle because not only they're commonly used in geometry but they're actually powerful too. A triangle, like we said in other videos, its angles is going to be equal to 180 degrees. And the thing is, if we use another shape what is the sum of all of them? If this is a square and this is 90, 90, 90, or 90, it's not going to be 180 degrees in the first place. Because the math, if you do 90 times 4, that's going to equal 360, not 180. So we're going to put 360 right there. Any quadrilateral, like rhombus, rectangle, a uh, parallelogram, a uh, kite, that is going to be equal to 360 degrees. 
A square is the best representation for a quadrilateral. So, for triangles, that's going to be like the base shape. That is 180. For quadrilaterals, it's going to be 360 degrees as a sum. So, the next thing we have to do is do something else. Hang on. There's a little bit of a mass confusion. If triangles are 180 right here, and quadrilaterals are 360, how can we find five-sided shapes? Pentagons. What is the sum of all angles in a pentagon? Hmm. Well, if we draw a pentagon, if this is a triangle, and this is a square, Triangles are 180, and squares are 360. Then, it also should probably be that if I add the two shapes together and build them like a house, then all the angles are going to be 540 degrees as a sum. So, we're going to put 540 degrees sum. The sum of all interior angles! Hang on, I'm still having the question of what happens if we try it with a six-sided shape, like a hexagon. So let's draw another figure. Hexagons are usually like this, a normal, cute, small, regular hexagon. And they can be split in half to make trapezoids. And the thing about trapezoids is, they're quadrilaterals. So, if we make one trapezoid right here, and make another trapezoid right there, each trapezoid is going to be not 360 degrees in total. If I put the two trapezoids together, So it means 360 plus 360, that will bring us to 720. So the sum of all interior angles for a hexagon is 720 degrees. Do you see a little pattern going around? Well, I kind of do. We go from 180 to 360 to 540 to 720. And the thing about that is, it always goes by 180, 180, 180. Well, this goes from 4, 5, 6. So the ratio is going to be 1 to 180. Hey, we can use a formula to solve out what happens if we find the sum of all the angles of a 100-sided shape.